Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to continue the series on functional groups and talk about the carbonyl and carboxyl groups. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe if you find this video helpful. With that being said, let's get started. Let's begin this video with the carbonyl group, which can also be pronounced as carbonyl. This group is made up of a carbon atom, double bonded to an oxygen atom, and single bonded to two R groups. Now, remember, from my previous video, I said that these R groups can be anything, so it doesn't really matter for this topic. What does matter is this part, the carbon double bonded to the oxygen atom. You might recognize this polar bond here between the electronegative oxygen atom and the carbon atom. The most important thing to note here is that this group does not ionize at cellular pH, which is around 7.4. Now, you'll find out why this is important later in the video. For the time being, let's move on to an example. This compound is acetone, which is a common chemical used in commercial products like nail polish removers. It looks like this. You might notice the carbon atom double bonded to the oxygen atom right here in the middle. Notice that the two R groups bonded to the carbon atom are these. The one on the left and the one on the right. They're both identical and they're made up of a CH3 molecule. A CH3 molecule is also known as a methyl group, but we'll cover that in another video. There's one more thing that's really important here, and that is, whenever you have a carbonyl group, like this one shown here, in the middle of the molecule, like it is here for acetone, that compound, the entire thing, is called a ketone. So acetone is an example of a ketone. Now let's move on to the carboxyl group. Carboxyl sounds very similar to carbonyl, and that's because it's built from the carbonyl group itself. Let's start by drawing a carbonyl group, except we'll take one of the R groups and we'll replace that. So we'll take that out and we'll replace it with an OH group, which is also a hydroxyl group. Now, I've already talked about the hydroxyl group in a previous video, so make sure to check that out if you haven't already. Anyways, the carboxyl group is basically a combination of the carbonyl and hydroxyl groups. When you put them together, you get a carboxyl group, and it kind of sounds like that too. Now, what's so special about this? Well, notice that we have a hydroxyl group, and that hydroxyl group has an oxygen atom bonded to a hydrogen atom. As a matter of fact, I could actually rewrite this to show that bond and the connection between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms. So let's talk about this bond right here. What's so special about it? Well, remember, oxygen-hydrogen bonds are polar, so that bond is polar. Now, I've already talked about this in my previous video, but the important thing here with the carboxyl group is that at cellular pH, which is 7.4, this bond tends to break. So it goes away, and the hydrogen atom kind of splits apart and goes off on its own. So this whole thing, this whole carboxyl group, essentially acts like an acid because it gives off a hydrogen atom. So this is why at cellular pH, the carboxyl group is acidic. And that's also why compounds that contain this functional group are called carboxylic acids. Let's take a look at a real life example. This is ethanoic acid, or also called acetic acid. But you probably don't know that you've likely consumed this molecule at some point in your life. That's because acetic acid is a compound that's used to make vinegar. It's the primary component in vinegar which gives it its acidity. This is what it looks like as a molecule, and as you can see, it contains a carboxyl group shown here. So notice the carbonyl component, which is right here, with the carbon double bonded to the oxygen, 
And then you also have the hydroxyl part, which is the oxygen single bonded to the hydrogen. When you combine those two, you get the carboxyl group. And this is an example of a real life carboxylic acid. Like I said before, this hydrogen atom breaks apart from the compound and becomes its own proton. So by donating a proton, this compound becomes an acid. So that's about it for this video. I'll be continuing my series on functional groups. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any new videos when they come out. Thanks for watching.